Hello everyone, my name is Lubav, and today we will be settling the Fraser River Valley. The game is SimCity 4 Deluxe Edition from the far off past year of 2003. The region we have here is based on the Fraser River Valley in British Columbia, Canada, created by a stellar and proficient map creator uh, that goes by the username Drunken Apple, who has pages upon pages of various regions from all across the globe available to download on Simtropolis and presumably some other sites here. The uh, modding community for SimCity 4 is quite robust even to this day. We'll be playing with a couple of mods, uh, including the latest version of the Network add-on mod and the Colossus add-on mod, along with a few other smaller fixes that uh, I'll go into detail later on. The purpose of this uh, video, hopefully it'll be a video series, is just sort of a, I don't know, just some sort of like a Bob Ross joy of painting thing, but for maybe a little SimCity 4 regions. I've been playing SimCity 4 for a long period of time, and uh, I've taken the philosophy that's less of a city builder and more of a uh, model train set builder. When you take that approach, at least for me, I find a lot more enjoyment in it. But enough about that, let's jump right into making a little settlement here. So, Fraser Valley, in real life, uh, is the confluence of the Harrison River and the Fraser River. We have Harrison Lake up here, Harrison River going down here to Harrison Bay, where then Oxbow's into the Fraser River, going from uh, northern Canada down along this vast floodplain, flat, flat floodplain that will get all sorts of wet and uh, rainy season here. And then this river opens out into uh, Vancouver, the big metropolis of Vancouver. But we're not going to be starting with the big metropolis. Some folks in wooden boats are going to be going up this highly navigable river here. Up to Harrison Bay, see that it's the confluence of two nice rivers here with a bunch of flat arable land. They're going to dock their little boats on this little river here, on the shore of the river rather. And they will start a little trading post. But before we do that, we're going to just gently smooth over some of this land here, but not all of it, using just the planes tool here. A lot of people use the quick level brush function, but uh, I find that it's just a little too dramatic for my taste here. I like to have some flat land and some variation, but only to the point where it is uh, noticeable and I can work around it. Because when it's mostly flat with just a little variation, I find that just sorts of, sort of uh, messes up how the buildings look. But with a big, nice, steep hill like that, you can build up it, build down it work with the land and it's pretty nice. That's how you make an interesting city by working with the land. You don't just bulldoze everything unless you know you have the money to do that. But this small little trading post here will not have a lot of money. The highlighted areas of your city will be affected with reconciled edges of the if you wish to continue. Oh goodness. It would appear Let's actually uh, restart that there. I'm using a tool that I'm not quite familiar with called the SimCity 4 Mapper uh, for the purposes of, uh, well, I want to use this region here and it was so big you cannot just uh, upload the JPEG of it. So with that in mind, we will actually be a lot more gentle here. Uh, that is why the region view has all those uh, sort of strange looking colors there. It's because it's not actually uh, loaded in. 
we'll just treat that as being sort of like the fog of war. Well, anyways, back to terraforming here. We made these floodplains just a bit more plainer. And now we're going to add some lovely little trees in the areas where it would make sense to have them. Which right now is mostly by the water. Trees love water. They want to stick in a biology class can tell you as much. I love water too. One thing I've only just recently discovered, this game is full of surprises. If you have the time set to the fastest setting, the trees will actually grow while you are in God mode here. The terraforming tools in SimCity 4 are quite fascinating. You can really get mods or you can really get nitty gritty with it. And, uh, it's a lot more complex than make a hill, make a valley. They have erosion tools, they have different types of mountain. You can really simulate a lot of uh, geological features here. So we're gonna give some trees here. The seeds blowing on the wind, they get carried down the river. There's more trees where there's more water. There's more trees where there's more wind to blow the seeds. So this floodplain here is going to be quite verdant with lovely little oak trees. And then the forest, as such, will uh, provide all sorts of lovely nutrients for various types of animals like uh, moose, elk, what have you. Whereas up here, in this more mountainous region, we see some pine trees growing, less oaks and maple, more pine, scrub brush. Zoom in. Yeah, we got some scrub brush here, some scrub land, some oak trees, some pine trees. So we got some hinterlands here. We got a tree line. And water comes down the mountain into the river, making it quite lush and verdant here. And as we let the time run on for some period, we'll see trees popping in and out as they uh, thrive and or die. So, let's contemplate what we're going to do here. In reality, if you look at, uh, oh, say, Google Maps, you will find that uh, this is where they settled the town of Harrison Mills, named after the Harrison Lake and River and Bay, which appears to be sort of a... Well, I can only assume it's a mill town. I could probably look up the Wikipedia page, but uh, we're not really here for that. The Fraser Valley, before the uh, Canadians came in and Canadized it, was inhabited, <clears throat> inhabited by the Stalo people about uh, 10,000 years ago. You know, a small collective of, uh, small by city standards, collective hunter-gatherers that lived off the land. You know, these rivers would have been full of salmon and various other pleasant fatty fishes. These forests would have been full of large mammals like moose and elk and deer and all sorts of other yummy creatures. And there'd be berries galore, pine saplings, all sorts of roots, all sorts of stuff in these forests that you can eat if you have a good eye. No agriculture. They were not the agricultural types. The people that uh, just landed on one of these shores here, let's see, let's say they land on this shore. They take their little wooden boats, they dock here, they witness all the little 3D animals sort of milling about here, goodness, and they say, my god, doesn't this just beat the city? Little do they know, they are the problem. Alright, well, let's name this little region Stalo, after the Native American population that lives here. I imagine on the map at this time, the settlers uh, probably are just labeling 
whatever Native American communities they are seeing here by name. And here they find the Stalo. And then there's also the bay. So it's Stalo Bay. Simple as. We are going to establish uh, our city on hard mode. Now here is the uh, oxymoron. I find that hard mode is actually easy. Because by giving you less money, you actually have to think about uh, what you're doing with your city. You can't just build a subway system right from the get-go and burn yourself out. So we have easy, medium, and hard. Home of hard. Mayor name, Lubav. That's me. Establishing our city now. There we go. So you can't see them, but I assure you, there's some wooden boats full of people here waiting to agriculturalize this whole region here. What's the first bit of business they're going to do? Well, they're going to install their network add-on mod. You can find the SAM3 Peg Dirt Road. When I am first starting a city, I like to use the dirt road instead of the asphalt street. I want to imagine to myself, well, the people actually settling the city, what are they going to do? And what they're going to do is they're not going to make an asphalt highway. That will come later. Once we establish this little trading outpost, a whole bunch of dominoes are going to fall. But the very first people with their shovels and axes, oh, they're basically playing Minecraft in real life imagine such a sordid thing. So they take this dirt road, they clear cut some forest, and they go inwards. Inwards into the forest. And they don't go that far. But they, they establish some sort of a front street here. They make maybe a sort of diagonal road that falls along the river, river rather. and uh, maybe for the purposes of getting a nice vantage point while they uh, continue their settling, they go up this hill. They go up this hill and they go upwards and they look around and they see that they are in quite a town, or valley, rather. They're in a nice little river valley. They are not in a town yet. But you can certainly imagine it. And they are already imagining the little general store here. Maybe some sort of uh, wood cutting operation. And they're already thinking, well, wouldn't this be a nice place for us to have our homes here? And a nice straight line. Maybe I want my home here. And this looks nice enough. And we can live up on the hill. Wonderful. It is the year... Oh... What year? wooden boats, it's before the days of electricity. Electricity is coming along later. But in this game you need electricity to have a town here. But we're certainly not going to have a coal power plant. We're going to have some windmills, windmills up in the hills. Perhaps right here actually. A couple. This is a small settlement here. In our minds, in our mind's eye, we can imagine these windmills as being stand-ins for water mills or an old style sort of windmill. Something that you would crush grain in, for example. It's anachronistic for sure, but uh, well, you can't simulate every single little thing. Alright, so we get a power line here telegraph lines and it comes down into town like so. Connect 
town they will only build in Chicago 1890 architecture. We have four options here that maybe we'll go into later here. These little humble, salt of the earth sort of folks, they don't care much for agriculture, no, they don't care much for architecture. They actually care a lot about agriculture. They want it really bad. So, let's give the people what they want. Which is a farm. It's about yay big. This is our very first farm here in Stalo Bay. One of our little settlers made so far. It looks like they've made some sort of a gas station, used car lot, and a uh, greasy spoon of some sort. Some sort of argument going on in the used car lot. But that's our economy so far. Here on the river of Stalo Bay, people come up on their little wooden boats, maybe a steamboat. They navigate up the Fraser River up into Stalo Bay. In real life, this is Harrison Bay, but uh, we're getting into some alternate history stuff here, folks. And what are our first residents doing? Well, this guy's already got an above ground pool. He's living the dream. He's got a nice big yard and that allows him a pool. As does this man here. Oh, here's a lovely little small cabin, which I will make historical because I like it. Well, who's living here? Here you go, this white guy with a beard. He looks a little bit like a settler. He's got that sort of frontier spirit about him. Let's name him... Frederick Stahl. And he already had this name before he moved to the town, but uh, just a coincidence. He's got his new job over at the Grease Pit. He's a cashier. Lovely. Out with that thought. He's 18 years old. You wouldn't tell just by looking at him, though. A Gemini. Flat broke. Stupid and sickly, too. But that's how it is on the rugged frontier, unfortunately. And what sort of car does he drive here on the rugged frontier? He drives a old model Volkswagen covered in primer. But he rides a penny farthing so we can see him as he goes about. Well, there's our Frederick. He lives in a small little cabin. As do his neighbors. You know what? Let's see. Uh, let's have his other ear. Let's have. Uh, let's see. Let's have someone of a more uh, First Nation sort of heritage here. Let's see if I can just find a thing here. Stalo, First Nation. I am literally just going on Google and seeing if I can find a, a name of a person here. Government. Here we go. Two elected tribal councils, Stalo Nation's chief council. Who's on this council? External links, Stalo Nation website. Goodness gracious, I'm going in pretty deep here. Alright, here's the bulletin. Maybe I can get a name off of this thing here. What is going on in Stalo Nation? Alright, let's name her, uh, well, this is loading. Elizabeth. Solo Nation Council. Give me just a name. Solo Nation Council. I'm getting a little.
goodness, this is taking me all damn day. Scoro, here we go. Elizabeth Scoro. That appears to be a appropriate last name. She is Frederick's neighbor over here in this cute little house. And would you look at that? She works at the same place. 25, Aries, cashier, poor and sickly. She drives a red pickup truck and uh, she gets around on a recumbent bike. Excellent. They're both complaining that they can't get to work for whatever reason. I don't care. Well, let's take stock here. Oh, excellent. We have our first little apple farm here. And whoever owns the apple farm lives there. And that's some of the workers that live here as well. So we already got a little outcrop. Let's take stock. Now that we're off to our rapid and roaring start here at Stavo Bay, let's see what we need. Elizabeth is happy. There have been no riots here in our town of 72 people. Fred's got a job in the house. The shame of squandered power. Too much of a good thing. We have too much power, which is certainly true. Here's what I'm thinking. We already got this wind power here. Maybe we'll connect these power lines all over the place. In fact, let's go up here. Big towering power pylons. We'll probably expand the wind farm at some point in our town's history and start, uh, we'll create a utility company, allowing further expansion up and down the river and into the valley. But right now, we uh, aren't dreaming quite so big, so this is going up north over here. We're not even going to go across the river yet. These are just some rather hypothetical power lines, rather. All right, Monique Diamond, our bookkeeper, introducing herself. Good buzz on power grid. Power's on. Good. City planner complaining about the whatever. All right, used car guy is nuts. Fred says the guy who runs his car lot here is crazy. Great. No power outages. Wonderful. So we are primed for further expansion. People want houses, they want more farms, they'd like a factory if I could manage such a thing. And they want, uh, they're quite satisfied by how many stores are here. Well, as always, we give the people what they want. We cut out some new dirt roads. There's another farm here. Another plot of land here. We are not making any money. Not yet, at least. So we better invest wisely. One option we do have is uh, we can legalize gambling. We can get the river boats over here, but uh, that would create some sort of criminal element, which I would like to avoid. But right now, we're happy with our apples and our, uh, what I can only assume is spinach. Well, let's continue with the farmland. This area is pretty well electrified. We got the nice power lines here, so no matter how far we go or how deep we go or whatever, people will be able to farm. Now you will notice that these farms do not have homes attached to them. It's mainly just the farm structure itself. So what I like to do is I like to dot these with a couple of homes. We have the ranchers, the homesteaders, seasonal farm workers. Like look right here, this little farm here, this is just a shed and a chicken coop with no house attached. 
So, homes away. There we go. A couple of shotgun shacks will go up here. People to pick the corn and harvest apples. We can speed this up a little bit. I try to avoid the cheetah speed as much as possible because uh, you can absolutely lose control of the steering wheel. But here at uh, Rhino speed, well, it's a bit more manageable. Turtle speed, get a little humdrum. Hopefully I'm using that word right, probably not. I'm not familiar with what humdrum actually means. So, we are satisfying some of our latent agricultural demand, and we're uh, doing a little tiny bit of uh, residential growth to go along with it. The farms we got here are mostly just sheds. Sheds, fields, chicken coops. We have a granary here, but truck back beyond it. But uh, major industry, this is not. We got some folks chopping wood back here. This fellow appears to be drinking a beer of some sort. So that's charming. Electricity is the only public utility we are providing at this point, and uh, we're really mostly just using it as a stand in represent. Uh, grain mill, water mill sort of thing. Now over here it looks like we are getting some sort of ranch. It looks like they've carved out some of the land here in order to develop a ranch. What do we got here? Well here's what we can do. We pull up this road here, go up to that gate, And now we have some housing for the ranch workers. Over here, uh, milking cows and making beef so that uh, everyone in the town of Stalo Bay can eat some hamburgers, which I imagine at this point in history have only just recently been invested. Fred is sick of the grease pit. So he is instead going to get a job at the ranch, which has night acres. And he decides to himself, I want a cute house, just like my neighbor, uh, Elizabeth. Off you go, buddy. Vroom, vroom, beep, beep. Driving on this old dirt road. How can I follow him? There we go. We're now tracking his location live. And there we go. Lovely. Well, people certainly want to live here. Say what you will about Stalo Bay, the people want to live here. A couple other things before we, uh, rapidly develop this town is that uh, I always find it's fun to name some of the natural features here. So let's name the river. This will be the Stalo River. Real life it's the Harrison River but uh, it's just a video game. This is the Stalo Bay or which it is uh, which the town is named. And this is going to be uh, Stalo's trading post. Maybe this turns into downtown, maybe it doesn't. Up here, the Scoro Hills. In this town of 182 people now, we have over more than doubled our population. Uh, we can go ahead and say Elizabeth Scoro is something of a prominent person. 
she has the mayor's ear after all. Well, we now have more demand, a lot more demand for agriculture, and some uh, more latent demand for commercial real estate, new homes. It seems like a snow melt river empties out over here, so let's actually uh, expand out this away. And this away, we got this waterfront property for sale here. We can certainly develop more around the trading post. In fact, why don't we connect this street to this one? Get some more of these little nice long lots. People pay more property taxes with bigger lots, is my understanding based on the, what I've read from the Prima strategy guide. So, send your interest to occasionally make some big lots if you find you have the room for them. Go. Got a nice bed there, nice little crook. The trading post is expanding. Now we're getting our first little general stores here. larger properties. Population down, taxes aren't adding up is what the headline is. Didn't realize we actually had a newspaper here. They are right. We are still in a budget deficit. I think it's probably time to start expanding a little more rapidly. Alright, well, some more farms, more homesteads. More homesteaders are kind of up the river here. Uh, they see the river close by, they see all this wonderful, beautiful land, just right for the taking. You know, this power line here can be a soft boundary for now. This is a big stretch of land right here, so it'll get a nice big farm. We are now getting bigger and bigger with our farms. We got the money. We got $62,000. Let's get a bunch of farms going here. There we go. We got this little crossroads here. People don't want any stores right now. The economy, uh, they're pretty well satisfied by what they got going on right now. But uh, will that hold forever? Probably not. People always want more. Can you blame them? More is so much nicer than less. Well, here we go. Let's make this a little two-sided there. There we go. Yep, we got some commercial plots available here. We got some of our first paved parking lots here. We're actually getting a lot of cars here. So these dirt roads that we used to cherish, well... I think our local uh, commercial residents here are probably eager to get this paved over. So let's go to a, a slower speed here while we do some road maintenance work. Where we tear down the uh, rustic little dirt roads, including this little angled piece here. And instead, we start paving over paradise. Boom, 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 boom. We don't even remember where the old roads used to be. That's how far the city's developed. You'll notice that uh, when I connect the streets to the dirt roads, the dirt road sort of takes it over, as you can say. We can get rid of this here, because uh, we are just, we're just paving. Here we go. And now we can actually make sort of a little commercial corridor there. Make that just a nice, simple, clean. Let's actually... You know what? We got money. Let's spend it. Let's go all the way to the crossroads here. And 
We got this big factory farm coming up here. This is, we are making something of a farming community here. So let's go all the way. Okay. Oh goodness, all right. That's one thing I don't like about the uh, dirt road thing is that uh, you just keep clicking around it, you'll keep making dirt roads, which is sometimes what you want, sometimes not. All right, these folks are probably getting pretty antsy about the fact there's no damn road. Yep, as you can see. All right, we are paving it all over. Here we go. We got a crossroads going there. Another crossroads. Uh, let's make this a nice little intersection here and then a curve upwards. Boom. We got a nice little waterfront district here. Might as well connect that here. Lovely. So we still have these nice little dirt roads up in the Soro Hills. So this is sort of our more uh, underdeveloped area. Meanwhile, over here we have ranches, we have granaries, we have horse stables, all sorts of stuff. And as such, we will pave our roads a little more thoroughly. So we can sort of imagine as being like a cobblestone sort of town now. Still no commercial demand, people want to actually move in property. So, as always, there we go. Some more homes for sale. Put some houses on these lots here. We're already going to be cutting into some of the farmland here, but that's fine because we're keeping the farmland expanding. That's it. We don't need that yet. All right. There we go. Some. Uh, Some nice re not retail, residential development going up there. Home builders are recognizing that people are going to want to live near these farms. And as such, they have bought some tracts of land. Alright, let's make some of these farms more homesteady. This orange orchard. This Apple Orchard has a stable attached to it. Big sort of granary here. There we go. Small towns will develop naturally. the most natural thing there is wanting to live next to this big giant grain silo looks like a damn team fortress 2 map over there now here's some nice waterfront property those folks will enjoy living there just get their water from a bucket from the river there's no water tower or anything like that we are just just barely cutting a profit here it is quite marginal, but we have invested the money we have wisely. Look at that. Well, we have a crossroads here. What's a great name for a town at crossroads? Crossroads. Imagine that. Maybe in a couple hundred years, this will be a, a bustling commercial district. There's some commercial demand now, so maybe there's a little country store here. And another one here. I'm sure they'll enjoy that. And what about here? More commerce. Let's actually uh, buy up some of this farmland here from that little farmer guy. Let's turn it into more housing plots. People certainly want to live here. They look like a factory too. Well, let's see what happens 
if we put something near the water mill. I don't normally zone industry this early, but uh, this is an isolated trading post. But now there's farms. The economy is no longer based on trading with individual people. You know, that is something you would see back in the early days of uh, the country's history. Is, you know, you get old trading posts set up on the river, trade with the local Native American population for furs, baskets, whatever the heck you wanted. But that quickly gave way to agriculture, canning, steamboats, what have you. All right, well, what do we got going on here? We got some... Oh, our population has crashed 500. I now get to build my nice little house. And where do I want to build my house? Well, the mayor should live close to the people. There's this nice little hill with a view of the river here. There we go. That's my house. Lovely. What's in the news? Big rewards for connecting big pictures follow big dots. By connecting to our neighbors with road and rail, we will improve the economy. Certainly true, but what neighbors? People want a fire station. Fair enough. Dean of Education wants to talk to me. I'm busy. I'm on a spending spree, that's certainly true. Elizabeth Scoro, arm is in bad shape, no dogs to tell. They want a firehouse. They want better roads. People like my house. People are employed at farms. There's a gas station. That's sort of a that's the two, said Stalo Bay. There's a gas station and we're all working on the farm. Well, let's take a look at our industrial area. We got combine harvesters and sheds, a couple of factories, uh, something called a collection unit. What on earth is this? You know, probably a bunch of jugs filled with pesticides and propane. So the industry in town is quite small. We, uh, not a whole bunch of people are employed here, but we don't have a whole bunch of people. So it all evens out. Oh, here we go. Another little horse stable here. Let's put some people next to that. People want more farms. They don't want as many farms as they did, but they still they want farms. Let's uh, build another road out here. We meet that road up here. We take this road along the river. It's one of these roads that's perhaps maybe a wash. Growing up in the desert, there are a lot of roads that would just seasonally flood. You would not be able to go around them. Maybe uh, we'll go ahead and make the same mistakes here in Scalo Bay. It's a floodplain for sure, even though it's not uh, simulated within the game, the flooding. Well, we got a new crossroads up here. Room for more farms. Let's make this a twofer. These two plots don't connect. Little small homestead right here. Well, everyone say hi to that fire truck passing by my window. Well, that's the sound of selling somewhere else having a very bad day. We got a decent amount of money here still. Let's let's keep expanding. Just farms, and no one's even well, someone's selling this farm here. Well, kind of strange for an apple orchard to have a grain silo. My understanding is that apple is not a grain, so uh, let's do these guys a favor and uh, chop down all their apple trees. 
so that they may grow something more appropriate there. All right, you can see all the natural wildlife in the forest here, sort of uh, not fond of the development. They're all making all sorts of noise and running into the street. Well, tough break. It is unfortunate. That's not my opinion, that's merely the opinion of the fellows that live in these little bungalows and ranch houses. See, we're getting inside of a small shanty town here. That is something you will see when you have a lot of residential demand. So, what are we going to do? We solve the residential demand. So people are in the interest of being close to the city, the city, are building up on these hills. Now in this game, uh, how topographically varied the plot of land is will affect people's desirability. People want to live in places with nice views, but they don't want to live on the actual slope. So I try to avoid building on high slopes whenever I can, unless the market forces dictate it. Alright, this all looks reasonable so far. This farm is not long for this world. People uh, like living at crossroads for sure. People are buying up these little plots of land. They got the dollar store and the five and dime, so something for all price points there. You'll notice I'm not making giant suburban tracks. We are just, we're just making little plots of land for people to live in. Well, let's go to the hood here. Uh-oh. Mr. Mayor does not like that one bit. He likes his paved road. And here's the thing about Mr. Mayor, he always gets what he wants. Ruthless man. Scoro Hills. We are going to develop this little area here, this little, uh, dirt road, hilly area here. This is definitely the less desirable part of town. The agriculture here is not good. Gorgeous view is close to the main source of power, but uh, if you want to live close to the city, well, look at the real estate market here. City, town, the trading post. This is no longer a trading post. This is now, uh... Oh, I'm not feeling creative today. Riverside. Have you ever been to a neighborhood called Riverside? It's usually named after a river of some sort. And here it is, the Stalo River. The Riverside on it. Anyways, back to Scoro Hills here. Now this is... If you thought these dwellings were humble, well, life can get a whole lot humbler. This is where you will find yourself living if you want to work in Stalo, but uh, don't have the money for a, uh, I would say, modular home and a pickup truck. In this game, a lot of people think the goal is to just have as many rich people and skyscrapers as possible, but uh, the economic simulation depends on a certain level of lower income sims to work in the stores, offices, shares, data entry clerks, farmers, assembly line workers. The economy depends on these guys. Now, one, one mod that I've installed that I'm enjoying so far is uh, the No Kickout mod by a user named Karina Marie, I believe her name is. 
she was quite prolific on Centropolis back in the day. She uh, made a lot of interesting mods, including the No Kickout mod. What this mod does is, uh, if a house is occupied by someone of a low wealth, uh, if you want a middle class or high class home to be there, you will have to manually demolish the home. Hovering the bulldozer over this poor man's house like a loaded gun. Anyways, you will have to manually demolish the home uh, for uh, developers to reassess what they want to do with it. As opposed to the middle class or high class developers just taking it outright so certainly useful if you want to uh, preserve your lower class neighborhoods a bit because you can certainly do some uh, 1970s urban redevelopment at your pleasure later on it gives you more fine-tuned control that paired with the Colossus add-on mod which I can go into more detail on later uh, allows the development of your city to go more gradually, more stable fashion. Richly prolonging the uh, development cycle. Well, to be more deeply satisfying. Well, as we can see, more people are moving into Riverside. People are moving into Scoro Hills and developing that a little bit. Mostly just a couple of small, small humble shacks up there. More small humble shacks. We love our humble shacks, don't we? That's actually a pretty big tract of land here, so we might end up uh, paving over this road sooner than later. Before we do that, though, let's take a assessment here. We got some garbage building up. And we are just a bunch of. Uh, we are a little under 2,000 people now, and uh, we are also a little dumb. Sad to say, but it's true. So we're just going to go up in the hills and we're just going to put our trash in a big hole, like so. And we will see our garbage go down uh, quite significantly. Let's speed this up. Let's speed this up again. Boom. Capacity shot through the roof. And now that uh, the streets are no longer filled with debris and litter, the place is just even more desirable. All these people here were waiting for uh, the trash to get picked up. And now we got something of a, well, frankly, a shanty town here. Up in the hills is a little less crowded. Not by much, though. It's quite dense here down that riverside. Crossroads is looking a little less dense. They did not redevelop this farm. So, we are coming up on an hour here. The last bit of our time, let's create a couple more little settlements around here. People working at the farms. Just little, small little tracts of land. Nothing too crazy. People live near their places of work. That is, uh, Every farm has its house. Hmm. Need to come out of this. That. No. Oh, that's annoying. I hate when there's apple trees near the granary. In fact, let's just dezone this whole thing. Just leave the granary here. We just say there's some sort of. Uh, Oh, I don't know. There's the river here. Boats come to fill the grain here. There you go. That's the floor. P 
people buy grain. Certainly true. There's some garbage. This is now, uh, this neighborhood sucks. Let's be frank. But, I like to imagine that uh, it beats whatever living situation these uh, little digital people had prior. You know, it's like, what, the 1800s right now in our game? Imagine you're a little guy living on a farm in Oklahoma. The Dust Bowl is happening. That comes later in history. This is pre-Dust Bowl days, but uh, I think this little river trade town all certain pleasures for a variety of people here. Meanwhile, what's going on here? Got our historic apple farm. What's happening is that uh, people from Scoro Hills are driving down in their jalopies and horse-drawn carriages and kicking up a whole lot of dust. They are creating some level of air pollution. Uh, level of air pollution is so subtle that it is not even reflected on our uh, little map there. Nevertheless, farms are very susceptible to pollution. So, uh, maybe let's cut an alternate route here. No, goodness. Give me a break. There we go. Come on. Getting frustrated here. Alright, you know what? You, they, they went and made the mayor mad. We're gonna pave over their little humble dirt roads here. Which is probably exactly what they want. We'll keep the dirt roads in the dump. Alright, relax. We are in your cars. All these little dots came up because, uh, well, we just demolished the road. They don't like that. But now we're paving the roads. All right, let's actually get rid of the dirt road entirely here. The dirt road has served its purpose. It highlighted that the little settlers were not paving the roads, but now we are. We are Putting in our cobblestones and whatnot. So now we have this little asphalt road here, which connects down here. It connects over yonder, and then goes down here and connects down here. Down here, and then this part sort of flattened out. Da, 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 da. There we go. These people have homes on the escarpment for some reason. And there we go. Maybe we'll see uh, that farm sort of heal a little bit. I doubt it. Oh, here we go. We're getting some air pollution down here in this main strip. Well, I guess it's coming from these stores, actually. There's not a lot of traffic there, actually. Well. There we go. Stalo Bay. It's actually growing to be quite large. We've got the Scoro Hills, Riverside, and the small town of Crossroads here. We have some uh, housing developments that have filled up quite nicely out here in the farmlands. Some of these will grow into towns of their own. Some of them will be absorbed into bigger towns. We are making big money now. In our next episode, we'll probably go ahead and do some civic development, give them the firehouses they wanted so badly, at which point uh, maybe some fancier, more high society type folks will come in, give us something more civilized. Well, let's save, and let's go out to our regional view.
must all obey, surrounded by the fog of war. Let's look at our transportation map. Goodness, oh, it looks like, uh, oh, whatever, anyways. Yep, just a network of roads and patches of farm. We'll come back to uh, Stalo Bay later. I hope you enjoyed. it.